part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen, Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. I'm Holly Wetzel. And I'm Jeremy Powell. And we are your hosts of The Orange is Oranger, a Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We give you all the dog pound coverage that you'll need each week to get you ready for kickoff and beyond. Don't miss our breakdowns of each week's matchups, game recaps, and any and all news out of Bria to feed your Browns appetite. As we all know, Holly, dogs got to eat. That's right, Jeremy. Hit that subscribe button and never miss an episode of The Orange is Oranger Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. The r and Podcast going to be rocking and rolling with you because football season is underway. College, Ohio State, the Power Fives, the Mac, the Browns. Michael Regai, are you ready to rock and roll with some football? Kenny, yeah, I've been ready. This is our time of year. This is what r and is all about. We're going to be with you every week. Kenny just said it, Browns, NFL, Ohio State-centric. So you got to stay with us all fall and winter long here on r and r that's right, the Red Eye and Rhoda podcast coming to you here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Subscribe now and don't miss a show. Hey, I'm Jason. And I'm Gary. And, and we, we love, love ball, ball cards. cards. And if you love ball cards too, good news. You just found your new favorite podcast. From breaks to grading. And from collecting to flipping, join us on the Ball Cards Show. The sports podcast for the sports collector. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. Welcome to the latest edition of the Dennis Maniloff Show, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Producer across the glass from me, across the uh, computer screen for me, is the great Jordan Powell. And this is a special edition of the Dennis Maniloff Show because the Guardians have done the right thing, thankfully, finally, and signed Jose Ramirez to a contract extension. Yes, it's true. The Guardians reportedly, no reason to doubt any of these reports, five-year, $124 million tack on to the club options of 2022 and 2023, bringing the total guaranteed value of the deal to seven years for $150 million. We here at the Dennis Maniloff Show, and then I at the WTAM uh, radio, news radio, WTAM 1100 and 106.9 FM, have been banging the drums, if you will, for hashtag pay Jose. I have declared myself, or now I guess we could say the past tense, I did declare myself the voice of hashtag pay Jose. Well, you know what? We can switch it. They paid Jose. Pay Jose got paid. And I couldn't be happier. I know Jordan is, is thrilled because we spoke it into existence. All right, just kidding, just kidding. It feels as if we spoke it into existence. All right. Because we've been on the Guardians. I would say, well, let's see here, um, close to a year in earnest because I was really hammering it home during the regular season last year when I knew that it was the final year of a five-year, $26 million guaranteed contract. 
And I was saying that, so almost 12 months ago, I was saying, look, you got to get Ramirez signed long-term. You cannot be picking up his his options, which uh, turned out to be 12 million in 2022. And then we're going to, was going to be 14 million in 2023. And that's going to be the case because of the way they did this deal. But I said, you have to do right by the player after that five-year, $26 million deal in which the Guardians got a market value, a market bargain of more than $100 million. You can't further insult the player by signing him to these uh, extent or these uh, club options. Unfortunately, they did pick up the 2022 club option, but it turns out that was buying them time to get the extension. And so that's good. Um, we'll get into the details of the deal in a second. But I, I first want to say this truly is a win for everybody. All right. It's a win, most importantly, for Jose Ramirez. Because Jose Ramirez is the best player on the Cleveland Guardians. He kept his mouth shut when he played way, 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 way above what he was earning the previous five years. The uh, impetus for Pay Jose did not come from him, didn't come from his camp. When I was talking about it, I was talking about it from my own uh, sources uh, of information, my own, uh, myself. I wasn't talking about it because Jose's people were telling me to talk about it or Jose. I don't know. I don't know Jose. I don't know his people. They don't know me. As I've said on previous podcasts, I've been part of a couple of group interviews with Jose way back in the day. And he doesn't speak English all that well. So they, there was a translator there. So I've never had any uh, relationship with Jose or his people. I simply wanted to see the guardians do right by the player and give him at least close to what he deserves. And so it's a win for Ramirez because you had to believe, and I know that the guardians might deny this. If they're asked it directly, but it certainly felt like they weren't willing to put out this kind of money and sink this kind of money into a player. So Ramirez, by virtue of how he's conducted himself with the Guardians, how he's been a model citizen, how he doesn't take his grievances to the media and complain about getting underpaid, that paid off for Jose Ramirez. He also gets to stay where he wants to be. <laughs> Jose Ramirez made it clear, I want to stay in Cleveland. Period, full stop. And the reports are that there's a full uh, no trade in there. And that would be an absolutely glorious thing. And I have no reason to believe it's not true. I mean, one of the people who reported it is the great Jeff Passan of ESPN. I, I can't overstate how valuable that full no trade is because when we were talking about it on Twitter earlier today, some of the cynics were coming out. Oh, he's going to get traded anyway. They're going to move him. They're going to sign him and move him. Uh, no, <laughs> not according to the terms of this deal. I don't think Jose Ramirez would have agreed to anything if there wasn't a full no trade in there because he wants to stay in Cleveland. He likes it here. He, he It's comfortable for him. This is his pace. This is his uh you know, personality, if you will. It's what he loves. He loves to be in Cleveland. So it's a win for Hosey. It's a win for Hosey's agents, even though they might not think so. And we'll get into that, as I said, in a little bit because of uh, the exact terms of the deal. But it is a win because they stayed at it. They didn't cave. Presumably they floated, you know, that Ramirez wanted to be traded to try to get the guardians back to the table. 
may or may not have been true, but it certainly felt like that was the case. But in any event, their client got paid a lot more than a lot of people thought he was going to get paid by this franchise. Okay. So it's a win for his, his reps. It's a win for the guardians, a huge win for the guardians. Absolutely. I've always said in my time in the media, I call it like I see it, especially now that I'm in a talk show, the radio talk show and the podcast and I'm not cover helping cover the, the the guardians like I did for a while under Paul Hoynes. And, you know, when you're, when you're writing and you're covering a team or helping to cover a team, you gotta, you know, you gotta play it as down the middle as you can, you know, deep down, maybe you're rooting for the team that you grew up watching and loving, but you know, there's a certain uh, way that you have to conduct yourself. But as a talk show host, I can be very opinionated and I can, be much more comfortable calling it as I see it. And so, yes, I was hard on the guardians. Absolutely. I was, I was hard on guardians ownership and I expressed it on the pod. I expressed it on the radio. And, and when I say, I, you know, I'll admit that I was wrong. I, I don't even know though, that wrong is the right word. I mean, I thought there was a possibility that they could get it done but I freely admit I was pessimistic about it. And I certainly wasn't the only one. It didn't look good as of the completion of our previous podcast two days ago. We said that, but I also opened that podcast by saying that it's possible that by the end of the pod, it would be a moot point because they would have signed him to an extension. So I never closed the book on it but I was frustrated and I did take to Twitter. I believe it was yesterday when I said, you know, after the latest report that the, uh, the negotiations had bogged down, I said, you know, ownership doesn't really care what the fans think. And yeah, that was unfair in retrospect now, but at the time it, it felt like ownership didn't care that the fans wanted Jose Ramirez so badly. But I'm glad that Guardians ownership stepped up. If I have to take some grief for getting after the Guardians uh, to do the right thing, fine. I, and, and I know they're not governed by what I say and they don't listen to me or anybody else. Or they, you know, If the media drives uh, an ownership of a professional sp- franchise and God help that professional franchise. Um, but... I choose to believe that the people have spoken, you know, and, and that the, the people, the fans made it clear they wanted Jose Ramirez to be signed to an extension. And I will choose to believe that that was part of the calculus. Flip it on the other, uh, on the other side. Imagine nobody cared. And by the way, when I say people cared, I know they cared based on my, calls based on my emails based on my uh, uh texts text to the show text to my phone uh reading comment boards i know guardians fans cared and i know they wanted ramirez to be retained at a reasonably fair price so there's no question that there was a desire by the fan base to keep ramirez i mean some guys you know, some players, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, if he stays, fine. If he doesn't, fine. No, this – Jose Ramirez was like a red line. Like, you had to keep him, according to the fans. So – but imagine if it were reversed. Imagine if nobody cared. Number one, if nobody cared about the team. Number two, if nobody cared about Ramirez. Like, oh, whatever. He's just another player. So what if his helmet flies off? So what if he's got a – you know, a cherubic personality, charisma, who cares? Let, let him let him go. Do you think ownership would be inclined? This ownership would be inclined to pony up what it did? Do you really believe that? That they'd be willing to tack on 126 million or 124 million to their two club options? I don't. So that's how I choose to look at it, that 
the fans spoke. And, you know, I, I, I might have mentioned this. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but the biggest winner in all this is the fans or are the fans. The fans deserve this. They absolutely positively deserve this because ultimately the owners and the players should be serving the fans. Yes, the owners are in it to make money. And yes, the players are in it to make money. And, and you could add on prestige for owners. You know, owners can have dual motivations. One is making money and two is being the prestige of being an owner. But I get it. They're all in it for themselves, uh, ultimately. But they should be serving the fans. They should be doing their best to please the fans. And this is a case where the Guardians fans desperately needed good news. Having sat through an offseason that included an MLB lockout and then nothing happening on the free agent front, nothing happening on the trade front. And all that uh, under the uh, umbrella of the name change and the controversy that came with that. So, it had been a problematic offseason for the Major League Baseball team in Cleveland, to say the least. This almost rescues the entire thing. It, it, it truly does. I mean, there's so much goodwill with this that I feel like it can go a long way toward healing a lot of wounds. Does it bring in the bat or two or three that the – lineup needs no but it at least can make you feel good if you're a guardians fan that your franchise cornerstone is locked and loaded for seven years seven more years that he desperately wanted to be here and that all sides got it done so everybody is a winner in this and well wait a minute hold on a second not everybody's a winner losers include oh i don't know the yankees the padres the blue jays and whoever else was going to be in the Ho jose ramirez sweepstakes and eh, you're not getting them okay you're not going to get them for 15 prospects so i'm happy to report that other teams in Major League Baseball are the losers in the Jose Ramirez extension because they're not getting our guy, Jose. Now, in terms of the deal, as we mentioned, and, and I, you know, I've checked every credible source and it's all come back to the same numbers. Five-year extension for 124 added to the two for 26 that are, that are tied up in the club options for a grand total of seven years, 150 million beginning tomorrow when the Guardians open the season against the Royals. And it really is amazing when you think about what Jordan Powell and I were talking about as recently as a couple of days ago. And we mentioned that by the time that podcast ended, the reported proposal from the Guardians was seven years for 130 million. Five tacked on to the two club options. And we had both said that five, uh, excuse me, seven for 130 is too low. It's not, and it wasn't about the length of the contract, it was about the average annual value. You, you can't tell Jose Ramirez, who's a, an MVP candidate coming off of five for 26 to settle for something where an average annual value is lower than 20 million. They needed to get that average annual value over 20 million. Well, guess what? Seven for 150 by my math is just a little bit shy of 22 million per year. 21 and a half or thereabouts. So, that objective was achieved by the Ramirez camp because when we had finished that uh, podcast, Ramirez 
people had said no to seven for 130. That, by the way, was the reported by two outstanding Hispanic journalists, um, Hector Gomez and Mike Rodriguez. They were the ones reporting um, up until, you know, the rest of the media that I saw anyway, got onto it. But they were all over the, the exact terms of the deal. The first offer that was reported by Mike Gonzalez and, uh, excuse me, Mike Rodriguez and, and Hector Gomez was six for 115. And then the Indians upped it to, uh, the Guardians upped it to seven for 130. And it finally became seven for 150. You say, well, Dennis, you, you were pounding the table and you started the pay Jose campaign because you felt like he was underpaid. Well, why, how can you say he's not underpaid still? The reason I can say that is because there's a qualifier. <laughs> the previous contract, he was woefully underpaid. This contract is actually respectable. It is based on his value, especially when you factor in cost of living and you factor in that Ramirez really wanted to stay here. Then all of a sudden the value of that contract becomes, there, there's some intangible elements added to it. And in the, in the cost of living case, some actual tangible stuff. So, Seven for 150 is a respectable number for this market size, this budget size. And that's why I believe Jose Ramirez and his people accepted it. But there had to be an increase from seven for 130. And, and there was 20 million. I don't necessarily agree with okay, 12 million this year, 14 million next year, they'll stay intact because they, they hadn't even picked up next year's option, obviously. But I get the point. You know, I get what the Guardians are trying to do. They're trying to get the cost certainty of the next two years because they had those club options. And then, you know, Jose gets paid. But the key is average annual value. Always remember that. That's how players look at it. And when you average... 150 over seven, you're, you're over 20. And you're not just scraping to get over 20. You're, com you're comfortably enough over 20 million a year. Jose Ramirez's market value right now is around 30 million a year. So yes, he's going to remain underpaid based on average annual value. But the reality of it was the hometown discount was going to be necessary. It was going to have to happen. All, I, all you have to do is look to Lindor. Lindor was not going to accept a hometown discount. And he was, you know, in a, a different tier of player, although I submit not, it shouldn't be that much different. But he had a different trajectory. He, was, he came into the league as a superstar. He was expected to sign for shortstop superstar money. And he was not going to accept any hometown discounts from Cleveland, no matter what he might say ex post facto. I, I don't think he even cared to say that anymore. But you knew Lindor was unaffordable. You didn't know for sure that Ramirez was unaffordable because Ramirez had let it be known that he really wanted to stay here, unlike Lindor. And all you had to do when you understood that was say, all right, well, evidently Jose is willing to accept a hometown discount. But the hometown discount couldn't be so low as to be laughable, as to be, you know, perceived as another ripoff. And that's what I think the first two proposals were, the first two published proposals by Rodriguez and Gomez, six for 115 and seven for 130. But they stayed at it, and they got it done. And 
I, you know, again, I couldn't be happier. And yes, I'm happy because the pay Jose campaign paid off figuratively and literally. Um, even though I don't get a penny out of it, which is fine. I, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> That's not the, disease, the design. That's why I throw figuratively in there. The payoff for me was figurative. Uh, the payoff for Jose was literal and for his, his uh, agents. And for the fans, it was just what should have been done in the first place. And now Cleveland fans can go into the season with somewhat of a positive vibe, whereas it didn't look good. And I mean, imagine, imagine the extreme in all this. Imagine if not only do the Guardians not get it done with Ramirez, but they move him. I mean, <laughs> whoa, that would have been just catastrophic for a franchise that's desperately in need of positive vibes. So, and you know, I, I think that Ramirez's people were frustrated enough that they were rattling the cage. They leaked it to uh, some of the media that you know potentially Toronto was involved, potentially uh, San Diego was in on the on the Jose sweepstakes. If there were some, they were doing their job as media. I mean, as uh, uh, agents to try to pressure the Guardians into this. Say, well, you know what? If we don't get a deal, we want out. That might not have been Ramirez saying that, but his agents might have said it, and his agents can say, look, it paid off. We got what we wanted pretty much because in part we pressured this organization into sign him or we want out. And the last thing in the world you'd want is a disgruntled Jose Ramirez. Although I, I would find it almost impossible to believe he would be disgruntled because he's such a happy guy. And as Andre not of Bally sports pointed out, and we know for sure, Jose Ramirez is not driven by the cash like a lot of his peers are, like a lot of his colleagues are, i.e. Lindor. He doesn't live from every last dollar. He's proven it. Um, but Jose Ramirez is no fool. He's nobody's fool. He's not going to be, you know, this naive, this deep into his career. The five-year $26 million deal, which I think was actually a four-year extension, but it turned out to be five for 26. That was signed when Ramirez was largely unproven. This time around, he's a proven commodity. He is a stud. Universally hailed as a stud. So to come at him with any sort of cheapness the second time around, it was as if you're saying, well, guess what, Hosey? We're going to try to play you for the fool again. And thankfully, the, the Guardians didn't do that. At least their starter offer wasn't a, a total insult. They were able to build off that. They stayed on it. They didn't, they didn't give up. The artificial deadline of opening day paid off, uh, you know, set by the club. That's good because it forced everybody to get something done and not – table it and then say, well, we're not talking about it till next off season. So congratulations across the board, everybody except other major league teams won today with the news of the Jose Ramirez contract extension. All right. Thank you very much for listening to this special edition of the Dennis Manilow show, part of the press play podcast network. We'll talk to everybody soon.